All right, so I was on Twitter and I saw someone posting some code where they were trying to get memoization to work in a tic-tac-toe game. Now, I absolutely am addicted to solving memoization problems in React. And with React hooks, I just think it's pretty fun to try to get these things to render less. So we're going to take a look at his code and see if we can fix it. Or at least get it to a point where the square space here, this is what he's trying to memoize, is uh, not rendering every single time. So first we're going to take a look a little bit at the code. Now, I haven't really seen this code much, and you probably haven't seen this code at all. So we're going to step through it a little bit. So this is the main thing that we're looking at at the top, is this square guy. So this square guy is the one we're trying to memoize, and we can see it takes a value, presumably x and o, has an on click, so when they click on the square, and then we have an index. All right, they have this calculate winner, which I'm going to ignore from now. And you'll notice there is a board, and inside of board, they're uh, mapping, and we can view the squares here, so cool. Um, and then announcement, I'm also going to ignore. Um, message, I'm going to ignore as well. And the game is what I'm going to look at. So these are like the three main things that I want to focus on is the square. It's being rendered inside of board. And board is passing in these props to it. All right, so essentially, why is the square re-rendering every time if he has memo on it, right? Well, there's basically three things, well, really just one thing that could possibly be happening, is one of the props that's being passed in is changing, and that's why it's causing it to re-render. So, uh, so we click and stuff. You'll notice, and by the way, oh, okay. You'll notice as I click on this, it lets you do that. That's a whole separate bug. Anyway, um, so we have that. Uh, why, why is this re-rendering? Let's see which value is changing, right? So first, let's I like to do is validate that it is re-rendering every time. All right, so we can just do a console log. We could also do a count the number of times it's being rendered, um, which actually may be more helpful for, the, for this. But actually, we just see a ton of IM renders. So this is actually a terrible way to view how many times it's being rendered. All right, we're going to do a little trick that I like to do. So renders is equal to use ref and it's going to start at zero and we're going to say square at index and we're going to render or display the index and also renders dot current plus plus so basically this is going to display the number of renders at each square all right and we could do can you do plus plus in javascript i actually don't even know Yep, that looks like valid syntax, cool. So we can see here that they are all rendered once, and now when I click this square, it renders every square again, right? So like square at index h should not be rendering every time, and so on. So what can we do to prevent this? Well, we know the value, well, we can just log these things too. Console.log value to verify. We know the value is null to start with and then switches to X and O. And that's not something that is going to get messed up with minimization. And actually, I should keep my console logs there so we can see if we actually improve the rendering. So the main thing, the, usually the culprit with these things are functions. In this case, it's going to be our on click is the culprit here. Um, I guess we'll keep that up there, actually. So where is on click being passed from for the square? Well, we have our board here. We're passing square or on click into the square. Where does board get this function? Well, we come up to the top here. We can see we are rendering the board and we're passing our on click. It's coming from handle click here. So I look at handle click and I see it takes the index and it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And what you'll notice is this function is being created on every single render. And so that is the basically just that is the problem. How can we get around this? Um, and we know this is being created on every render because we see it's just in the uh, function, the game function here. So every time game re-renders, this function is being created and there's a new reference being created for it. Now, if, if we click on these things, we can see it also depends on a few things. So it depends on squares. It also depends on is next. It also, it doesn't depend on, well, it does depend on winner. See winner right here. Um, unless winner, actually just kidding, looks like winner is right here, not this winner. So it actually is correctly highlighting. That's good to see. 
Um, but yeah, so how can we get around this to where we're not creating a function every single time? So why I was seeing whether these things were inside of this function is one way we could do this, which is like a use callback. Um, and we could do this and we could add squares and is x next as our dependencies, right? But I think this is actually not gonna work out well for us because think of what the optimal case is. The optimal case is square only re-renders if the x or the o changes, right? That's when it should re-render. Um, and if we look at is next, this is gonna toggle true or false. And so that's gonna cause the function to be changed every single time. So I think this is a good situation to switch this to a use reducer hook. Now the problem, really the main problem with use reducer is it's gonna be changing the logic a little bit because we're now have to create a reducer, All right? We could say state action and we're gonna do switch action.type and we're gonna to have to create some cases and we're gonna return the state. And of course, when we're doing this, we're gonna have a default state and that's gonna return the state or a default in our switch. All right, so we need to actually create some cases where we do some things and we're basically gonna replace the logic of this. At least we're gonna to try to, because I haven't really looked at it. I don't know how complex it's gonna be. All right, so here what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be my state. I'm gonna have squares is x next and winner. So I'm basically gonna take all this logic and shove it in here. Um, all right, so this is going to be the dispatch function. And now we can set some initial values. So squares is equal to, and we can copy what he's using here. And we can do is x next true and winner is empty. And now we're gonna get rid of those. And the reason why we're switching to use reducer is this dispatch function is not gonna be changing. And so now we can memoize it based on that. Um, that's basically the gist of why this works. Um, so now really dispatch is what we're gonna be passing in here. Um, so we can basically handle these different cases where they're calling set in our reducer now. So I guess the first thing I wanna start with is the handle start. So I'm gonna call this start. And looks like what it wants to do is it wants to set the squares and winner to null instead of an empty string. It looks like he just wants to set it to the default state. So I'm gonna say default state and I'm gonna define this stuff up here. And I'm going to put it here. So we're a little off the screen here, but the second parameter here is gonna be the default state of our reducer. So let's scoot this over a tad. So use reducer, we pass in a reducer function and the default state. And the reason why I just put it in a variable up here is now I can say whenever we start, say default state. All right, so this handle start, we are done with. And now what it can do, well, we're not done with it, but what we can do is we can refactor this function here to use a callback if we wanted to. So we could call this handle start use callback and it's only going to change when dispatch changes. Um, yep. And then inside of here, I'm going to say dispatch start. All right. So we have successfully, oh, this is handle start, not handle state. There we go. So basically we have just changed the function now to uh, only change the reference of this whenever dispatch changes and dispatch won't change. Um, and so that is going to allow us to memoize, well, we can memoize the, the announcement now as well as other stuff. Um, so now we can do the same thing to our handle click here. So handle start and the use callback. Again, this function is just going to be called when handle start gets called and dispatch start, which puts the default state here. Uh, all right, let's try tackling this handle click guy. So we're gonna do basically the same thing, handle click. And now the callback is gonna take um, an I, so an index, and then we take dispatch. So this is going to be, we could even, we can call our action handle click. Handle click. 
And oh, by the way, there we go. That's how you dispatch an action. Or at least let's get rid of these or a few of them. Um, the way I did it is I was dispatching actions as objects, so I should be consistent and do it like that. Or at least I was expecting it to be an object which has a property called type on it there. All right, so handle click, our use callback. We notice I'm putting a parameter here. So when I call handle click, it'll allow you to pass in a parameter and get that value here. All right, so now let's call handle click which is the, that type. And now here we can pass in I as a just, you know, as a payload, if you will. And we could rename this to payload if we wanted to as well, but I'm totally fine just calling it I. Or we can call it index, I think that's probably best. Um, and we can also just comment this out, that way we're not getting all these errors, nice. All right, so I've, re I've replaced the logic, so now we dispatch a handle click at the current index whenever you click. So right when I click this, it's now going to dispatch that. And of course, this is not doing anything, right? Because we haven't actually changed the logic. So now we're just going to move this logic basically into the case. So we're going to say case handle click. And let's see if we can take this logic and get it to work in the reducer. All right. All right, so we're gonna, at the end of the day, return some kind of state. All right, so it says const moves is equal to dot 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 squares, so state dot squares. And he's looking at moves at the certain index i. That's coming from the index, action dot index. This should be the state. Okay, so he is mutating the state here or not the state, but he's mutating moves. And let's indent this all over at once. And then set squares. He's just updating the value to what the value of moves is. All right, so that means squares is now equal to moves. And set is next. So is x next is equal to the inverse of is, is x next. And then winner is equal to calculate winner. So we're gonna say winner. And by the way, this should be state dot. Uh, winner is equal to calculate winner. And I, I'm wondering if this returns a string. Does it return null? Let's see what calculate winner returns if it's not there. All right, so it returns the winner, and the render winner is being reduced. And looks like it may be an empty string. Let's let's just check this out, and just return calculate winners there and see what that does. All right, so now if I click, nice, we get our X. See if we get a winner. Nice, it says O is the winner. It's win with X now. X is the winner. So I think we've switched the logic over correctly. So we can remove all these comments. And last step is to just verify if we've got the memo changing every time. So it looks like it's rendering once, which makes sense the first time it should always render let's clear a console i click here square index x62 is being rendered then 5 then 1 then 0 so you'll notice we're only getting uh, the square that we are actually clicking on causing it to re-render right so here's me toggling it back and forth on 6 we go back to 7 until it be rendered twice so there we go, we have successfully switched it over. So now it is being memoized correctly. And now we are only re-rendering this square whenever uh, the value changes. And again, let's go through why that is. So we have our use reducer here, which has a dispatch function. Um, and then we had two use callbacks, handle click, 
handle start, which are basically our two functions that were problematic before that were causing things to re-render because we were creating a new instance of them each time. And so the reference was changing. But now we said, don't give a new function unless the dispatch changes, right? Because we added it as a dependency here. Um, and the dispatch here, and these are basically our two actions. Um, and our dispatch here is not going to change. With use reducer, the dispatch won't change on each render, so we are fine. Um, and then this handle click is being passed down to our board. And again, the handle click doesn't change unless this changes. So handle click's not changing. It gets passed down to board. Board, if we look up here, renders square. Um, and passes the on click, which is not changing anymore. So none of these props um, are going to affect the square unless we want them to re-render the square. So if, if either the, pretty much this is the only one that's going to change. If the index changes, which it won't in this case, uh, it's pretty much only the value. So the only really at this case, only the value is going to be changing, and that's what we want. And when the value changes, we want it to re-render. So there we go. Um, maybe this was a super weird video and it was hard to follow because I kind of just took a random piece of code and started adding use reducer logic to it. Um, so maybe I shouldn't do these type of videos in the future. Let me know if this was hard to follow um, or if you like this style of just like picking up some random code and refactoring it a little bit because um, it's kind of, I don't know, I, I, I get a lot of, uh, I really like like seeing pieces of React code that is rendering too much well see this is see this is one of those things also where it probably doesn't have to be optimized but anyway i love optimizing this stuff with minimization um so i really enjoy doing it but this was a little bit random um but yeah so i'll link this code if you want to look at it and you want to try minimizing it yourself or look at the rest of it and that's it for this video